fans, do you want to win your share of $100,000? Simply enter the houseofboxing.com fight night prediction challenge. Compete with boxing fans around the world. Simply head over to houseofboxing.com and sign up now. This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with houseofboxing.com and William Hill. Delighted to be joined here. I'm going to say first time on interview. I'm not sure. I can't believe I'm saying those words. Mr. Charlie Edwards, how are you, brother? I know, I've been waiting for the legend to interview me. I've been waiting waiting to interview you. You're from the area as well, and you never asked me. I have. That's where I have, actually, yeah. Years back as well. Okay, okay, (laughs) my bad, my bad. No, you're good, you're good. How are you, bro? Nice to see you. Yeah, I'm pissed off, to be honest. Absolutely fucking fuming, seeing the Cal Yaffa fight get announced. After Eddie saying um, no easy fights anymore, um, a lot of the prospects are getting chucked in the deep end, and then Cal Yafai turns down a fight with me. I got offered to fight Cal, Cal on six and a half weeks notice. I accepted, said send me the offer tomorrow. No, I weren't going to price myself out. I know it's the opportunity that I need to get back the ball rolling because it feels like I've been frozen out of the, the sport. I've been n- not managed correctly in my eyes, in my opinion. And um, yeah, so I accepted it. Currently, at the time, trainerless. I've got my little team set up over in uh, Portugal, and I was going to fly a trainer in over in Portugal to to train me for the fight. Six and a half weeks' notice, you know. And they wanted me to headline a show, um, the eleventh of November show. I don't. I think there was struggles with something. And um, yeah, so I accepted. They went back to Cal. Obviously, we know now he's fighting on the 18th, but he didn't have a fight lined up. And um, they were trying to get him to the 11th, me and him headlining. That's, that's the biggest fight for both of our careers, you know. It's big British dust-up. The British fans would want to bite on it. There's history between us. I've been calling him out for years. He's been talking me down for years, saying that I'm not worth this, that, and the other. He's took f- three times less pay to fight over in America, ran off to America, hand-picked opponent for a vacant title, and it's just not good enough. Like, no wonder the sport of boxing is dying. Do you know what I mean? The fans want to see actual fights. And when two former world champions, well, one's up for fighting, the other one's just not, not entertaining it in a British dust-up, which everyone gets behind, it's just sickening. It's really bad on the sport. As he said all, he, all his career, he can knock me out. I'm an easy fight. All this bullshit he keeps saying to run away. It makes perfect sense. I know Matram, Eddie Hearn, wanted to make the fight, um, and Cal waited 24 hours to think about it. I also know his manager was trying to push him into the fight, said it makes perfect sense right now. Do you know what I mean? And he waited 24 hours and simply come back and said no. It's, it's sickening, it's pissing me off. Like I'm ready to fight, do you know what I mean? I'm ready for big fights, I'm ready to be a part of big events. And it feels like I've been frozen out of the sport. Like people saying, oh, have you haven't fought in a while, you're retired. I ain't fought in a while because no fucker wants to fight me, and it's pissing me off. Well, let's sort of go into this then, right? So you've accepted it on your hand. Had they had Matram, had they had prior contact with Cowher and the team to sort of give you the idea that this fight was going to happen, or has it been proposed to you before him? What's, what's um, the communication like? Well, I don't, I don't know that hundred percent ins and outs of it, but I'm, I'm led to believe that Cal was struggling to get a fight. They, they, Matram has and Eddie has definitely put out that they only want to make proper fights now, or they're going to let people go. And um, he was supposed to fight around that time. So obviously they've offered it to me, thinking, oh, Cal's going to take it. He's been in training camp. We're giving Charlie six and a half weeks notice. If anything, like, Cal should be buzzing. I mean, we're getting him on short notice and he's underprepared. He's not with Joe Gallagher no more. Do you know what I mean? Like, he, he's just forming his own team. Like, he's in a position where you should, if you have confidence that you're, you can beat someone on, on a six and a half weeks notice when someone's sorting his, his team out and, and hasn't been in training camp and you're training away and sparring, you should be confident in taking that fight. So Matchroom give it to me because they probably thought, he's definitely going to accept that, surely. He's been saying for years he can batter Charlie, he's, he's not worth this, that and the other. He's getting his big, big payday for it. They've offered him big money for it and still turns it down. It's embarrassing. Does this fight happen in 2024, in your opinion? We know now he's fighting in Los Angeles. I suppose we're just going to have to put that for one side, as difficult as that's going to be. Have you spoke to Eddie? Is there any possibility of you getting out on a show this year and then, and then fighting him next year? Well, I, I see the interview that you put out the other, uh, yesterday, I think it was, and Eddie said that um, 
because it's not happening and he's turned it down that he would get me out this year so hopefully I'll have to have conversations with him it can happen but like I'm not signed to match him you know um, I feel like I've been left on the on the sideline to to be frozen out and like probably leaving match from back in the day was probably the the biggest mistake I ever did but I was an emotionally young man who went through a lot with the situation with the Martinez and all that that didn't sit right with me maybe I should have just bit down and, and, and carried on but like I'm, I'm humble enough to say that do you know what I mean I'm humble enough to say that was probably my biggest mistake of my career you know um, I'm hungry obsessed more than ever and I deserve my shot and I think everyone can see probably I'm my worst enemy because I'm trying to stay relevant I will post how I'm training on social media I tra train six days a week and have been for the last two years I've lived this and breathed this sport of boxing I'm so hungry to get back to it but it's weird, I'm just not getting no bites. And like, you can come back and say, oh, he's desperate for a payday. It's not at all. Because what I was willing to accept was showing that I just want the opportunity because I know my money's going to come later on because I know what I'm doing in the gym and I know how better I've got and how much powerful I am. That's why I know Cal won't take the fight. It's so annoying, it's, piss it's really pissed me off. Um, you and Sonny have been around all week. He's been fighting yeah. your case as well. Good yeah. to see that both yeah. of you back in good spirits and, 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 and all good with you too. Yeah, yeah, we're good as gold, you know. Like, it was all like a kind of media ploy. Come on, it spread the internet. It was a viral movement. Um, and yeah, but listen, me and my brother, like, we're blood brothers, you know what I mean? We're close as houses. We do anything for each other. And yeah, I've got to give him props and praise that he signed with Matchroom and he still spoke up on my behalf. So it's a big shout out to Sonny. And um, yeah, I'm actually going this week down into Sheffield, spend a week with him, actually sparring for the first time in two years. So that That's should good. be interesting, um, help him for the, for the band fight and um, also probably be joining him out in his training camp as well. Charlie, just lastly for me, if you don't mind me asking, don't mind discussing, no worries if not. You have parted ways with Joe Gallagher. Um, you able to say your reasoning why? All I can say on that note, I've got to be careful what I say, but I, 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 I personally just, I, I, you know what? I'm not going to say nothing because I'm not going to be myself in a, in a predicament. But I don't have any time or energy for that man at all ever. Okay, Charlie Edwards, good to see you back. Um, we look forward to that ring return, hopefully. And uh, thank you for speaking to us at Boxing Social. Final message to your supporters? Yeah, thank you for continuing to support me. I continue to walk around the ve venues. People come out and ask for pictures. I'm so sorry that I haven't been in the ring. It's n not my fault. I've been prepared to go. I could go on three weeks' notice. You see me do the, the, the 5K oh today. Oh, my God, by the way, this man can run. <laughs> in a ridiculous time. Like, I'm ready to take my shot and take my opportunity. And um, I'm just grateful and thank you for everyone who does continue to support me, continue to ask me. Although it's soul destroying and it, and it breaks my heart to not have no news and keep trying and trying to make something work, um, we'll get there, we'll get there. And when I'm back, I'm taking it with both hands and I'm going to shine bright. Charlie Edwards, top.